Hey kids, welcome back to Kids Church, and we are continuing our series, Dollars and Cents. And we're learning all about having good sense with our money. Now, if you guys remember from last week, we learned about how having good sense with our money starts with putting God first and obeying his command to tithe. Do you guys remember what tithing means or what it is? Tithing is taking that first 10% of the money that we earn and giving it back to God. If we obey him and put him first, he will take care of the rest. And today we're learning how God will provide for each and every need. But first, let's check in with Sophia for today's video. This is Sophia. Welcome back to our series, Dollars and Cents. We're going to be learning all about having good cents with our money and possessions. I have some good news and some bad news. Which do you want first? Okay, here's the bad news. I lost my job. I learned the hard way that you really do have to obey your boss if you want to keep your job. But remember, I had good news. The good news is I'm going to win the lottery. Then all of my needs will be taken care of. Don't you think that's a great idea? Wait, before you answer, I had another source to get my needs taken care of. I think I'll invest in one of those get rich quick schemes they show on TV. Buy this video course and you too can become a multimillionaire. All for the low, low price of only $79.95. What do you think? Should I do that? Okay, you're pretty smart. I don't need to look to any of those things as my source. God is my source and provider of everything I need. I don't need to worry or freak out. I just need to let him know what I need, obey him, and trust that he will provide. That's exactly what you're gonna learn in your lesson today. It only makes sense to trust God. After all, he created everything. He has so much to give. Well, I better let you get into our lesson. Until next time, this is Sophia. See you soon. Wow, isn't it cool that we serve a God that created everything? He has access to a lot of stuff, way more than we do. We can't just rely on the banks and the government to take care of us, because instead we must realize that God will provide for our needs according to his glorious riches. But first, let's find out the what you gotta know from, from our new friend, Boudreaux. What you gotta know, what you gotta know, time for Boudreaux, what you gotta know, what you gotta know, what you gotta know, time for Boudreaux, what you gotta know. Hey there kids, it's me, Boudreaux. That's pronounced Boudreaux. And I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're learning all about how God is our provider. So every time today that somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. God is the source of everything I need. That's right. God provides us with all of our needs. So you're telling me right now that if I say I want me one of those pickled possum pot pies, he's going to just plop down one of those pickled possum pot pies directly down in front of me? No, no, no. He ain't going to give you all the silly things you want. God knows what you really need. And he said he'll supply all your needs if you just ask him for help. So every time today that somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them God is the source of everything I need. And that right there, kids, is what you gotta know. Well, I'm Boudreaux from the Bayou saying bye-bye you. Okay, that was a great what you gotta know. Be ready to jump up when he pops up. Let's say it together in practice. God is the source of everything I need. Awesome. Okay, well now let's get into our Bible story. And today I have a really cool story for you guys. It is from 1 Kings, which is in the Old Testament. 1 Kings 17, chapter 17, verse 7 through 16, if you guys want to find it in your Bibles and follow along. But today is one of my favorite stories that I had as a kid. It's a story of God doing a great miracle for a widow and her son through the prophet Elijah. So let's watch this video. My name is Ashley. Are you ready for Bible Tale Time? Today, I'm going to tell you the story about a widow. A widow is a woman who has lost her husband. This widow lives in the town of Zarephath, and she has a son. 
in her town, it hadn't rained in a long time. Even the stream nearby had dried up. And because of that, a lot of people in the town had no food to eat. One day, with her stomach growling with hunger, the widow went out to gather sticks. She wanted to start a fire so that she could bake one last loaf of bread with what little flour and oil she had left so that she and her son could eat one last meal and die. As the widow passed through the town gate, a stranger called and asked her for some water. When she was going to get the water, the stranger asked her to bring him a bit of bread too. The widow was shocked. She might have been thinking, didn't you realize that there was no food? Am I supposed to share what little I had left with a stranger? The widow then replied to the stranger saying that she doesn't have any bread. All she had left was a little amount of flour and olive oil. The hungry widow didn't know that the stranger was Elijah, who is God's prophet. And the widow was chosen to help Elijah to survive the famine. God's prophet is a man chosen by God to help the people communicate with God before Jesus came. The widow didn't know what to do because she only had enough left for one last meal for herself and her son. Elijah told the widow not to worry and to go make bread for him first. Elijah assured her that God promised that there will be more than enough until God sends rain. While she was walking to her house, a thousand questions must be running through her mind. The flour and the oil will not run out, but who will fill it? Should I really share the last bread I have with him? Will God really provide? After making the bread for Elijah, she peeked into her jar and she was shocked. There was more flour. Then she peeked into her jug and there was more oil. And every day after that, there was enough flour and oil just as what God told Elijah. Sometimes, it is hard to share what we have, especially when we don't have enough. The widow was afraid to share her last meal with Elijah, but she did it anyway and God blessed her. You can be kind just like the widow too. Let's learn to be kind and generous by sharing and being a blessing to the people around us. That's a really cool story, isn't it? We talked, we're going to talk more about that in our lesson and unpack it fully because there's a lot of really cool lessons that we can learn from that neat story. But first, let's get into our power verse. So make sure you have your Bibles out if you didn't already and place it on a flat surface in front of you, okay? And with your hands in the air, no cheating, when I say go, we're going to look for Philippians 4, verse 19. Ready? Go! All right. So, if you guys have your verse pulled up, let's read it together. Verse 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Jesus Christ. Wow, that's an interesting verse. But okay, who's the me, right? So maybe your version might say, and the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Jesus Christ. Okay, so do you guys know who wrote the letter to the Philippians? His name was Paul. Okay, so when he says, and the same God who takes care of me, right? So the same God that takes care of Paul. Now, Paul went through some really difficult stuff and the Lord provided for him. So when he's writing this to the Philippians, they know what Paul went through and how God provided for him. And so it says, the same God who takes care of Paul will supply all of our needs according to God's glorious riches, which have been given to us through Christ Jesus. Because when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, it qualifies us to be children of God. And God takes care of us and provides for us. God loves us so much. And we are talking about how we can trust God to take care of us, even when we are in need right? He can take care of us every single day and provide for us. And we need to learn to depend on him and fully trust him. All right. 
Well, oh, is that gator gravy? Here's Boudreaux. Give me some of that. Everybody up. What you gotta know? God is the source of everything I need. Awesome. Okay. Well, keep that power verse in mind because we're going to dig into our lesson now. Now, I have a question. Have you guys ever had a major need in your life? Maybe your parents lost a job and they had a hard time paying the bills. And so that's stressful for you too as a kid. And maybe because of that, you couldn't do fun things like go on a class field trip or a school trip because they didn't have enough money to be able to send you, right? But whatever that need was, or maybe still is, it's difficult to have a need and not be able to do anything about it, right? That weighs heavy on us. Well, today we heard an incredible story about how God provided for Elijah and the widow. And there are a lot of lessons in that story that we're going to unpack today. And the first one is admit your need. So turn to your brother and sister and repeat, admit your need. Okay. Now, when Elijah asked the widow for a meal, she admitted that she didn't have any food. She was like, I only have a tiny bit, barely enough to feed me and my son one last meal. Right. And she admitted that she needed more cooking oil and flour if she was going to make anything for Elijah. But the important thing to notice here was that she didn't act like she was just fine, right? She admitted that she had a need and this actually set her up to receive a miracle. But why is admitting that we have a need so important? Why is that so important? Well, I've got something here. Do you guys notice anything different? I'm wearing a silly hat, aren't I? It's got two little eye holes. I don't even, it's kind of a weird hat, okay? Some people maybe like to wear this. It's interesting. But what if I denied that I didn't have a hat? I said, I'm not wearing a hat. What are you guys talking about? Don't be silly. There's nothing on my head. Well, does that change the fact that I still have a hat on my head? No, I'm, I still have a hat on my head. It doesn't matter if I walked around all day like this, shaking my head, being whacked in the face with beads. It didn't matter if I was like, no, what do you mean? I'm not wearing a single hat at all. I, it's just my hair up here, right? Well, at the end of the day, I'm still wearing this silly hat, right? That doesn't change anything. Well, it's same with us. If we don't admit our need, it doesn't change the fact that our need is still there. Right? So we must admit our need to God, okay? If you're sick, ask for healing. If you're lonely, say that you need friends. And if you're sad, ask God for joy. He loves to bless us with joy, okay? When we admit our need, we're saying, I can't do it by myself. I need God to help me, right? And God loves it when we come to Him and ask him for things and saying, hey, we need help. He loves to provide for us. There's some people that say, if you admit that you're sick, you don't have real faith for healing. Or if you admit that you don't have money, then you're not truly having faith that God will provide. But that's not true. We need to remember that God wants us to admit. When we admit, it sets us up for miracles, just like the widow. Now, the second thing is obey God's instructions. So turn to your brother and sister and tell them, obey God's instructions. Elijah told the widow to bake him some bread before she made any for herself and her son. What? That seems kind of crazy, huh? Because the widow could have just told Elijah, hey, go take a hike, right? She barely had enough for her and her son, but instead, she obeyed and she made Elijah some bread first. And because she obeyed, she was rewarded with an amazing miracle, right? Her pot of oil filled up and so did her flour. She had more than she had from the beginning. And sometimes God gives us instructions that don't always make much sense to us, right? Like if we're in need of money, we're gonna pray and ask God, like, God, I'm, I'm running low on money and I need to pay the bills. I need you to provide for me. And he might say to you, trust me, pay your tithe first. Well, you might be thinking, what? Did you not hear anything I said? I told you, I don't have any money. And now you want me to give it to you, right? But 
we must be like the widow and just obey those instructions anyway and trust that God will provide. Now, what if I was gonna invite you to my house, okay? I have this envelope with the instructions on how to get to my house with the address, okay? And I would send this to you. Be like, hey, here's how you get to my house. Why don't you come on over for dinner? But what if when you got these instructions in the mail, you decided that you weren't gonna listen to them? You're like, well, who cares? I'm sure I can just figure it out. I've never been to her house, but I'm sure it's not that hard. She probably lives in Cloquet. Well, there's a lot of people that live in Cloquet. Do you think you'd be able to find my house? Probably not. More than likely, you're gonna get lost. And if you wanna get to my house, or at least arrive on time for dinner, you're gonna need to follow the instructions. But when God gives us instructions, sometimes we think that we know better. Like, nah, I can do it, right? But we need to remember that we need God's help, okay? Because we can't do things on our own. We must obey his instructions. And that brings us to our third thing. If I obey, he will provide. So turn to your brother or sister and say, if I obey, he will provide. God provided for Elijah, the widow, and her son because the widow obeyed the instructions. Now, when we obey by paying our tithe first, it shows us that we trust God to provide for us and to take care of us. And guess what? He's going to honor that obedience. He will. It's so easy to think that, well, we can just handle things on our own. But God is bigger than any problems you face. And he wants to take care of you. He loves to take care of you. And he is willing to provide to you, for you according to his glorious riches. Just like that verse said, according to his glorious riches, he will provide for us. Just like he did for Paul and for the widow and Elijah. So the first thing is we must admit our need. Okay, you got to admit in order to set yourself up for that miracle. Admit and then obey the instructions that God gives you. And then he will provide for you, just like he did for Elijah and the widow. Okay, and you could receive a miracle of your own. So let's finish up with some prayer. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Lord, we just thank you that you promised to take care of us, that you love to provide for us. And we admit that we can't do everything on our own. We need your help. Lord, we demonstrate our trust in you by putting you first above all things, even above our worries and our stresses in our life. And we obey your instructions of tithing. And we give that first 10% to you. And we do it joyfully, knowing that it's helping you and that you will provide for us. And we just ask for your provision and for a miracle in our lives. Lord, I just pray for the kids who need a miracle and need some provision, that they can just give that worry over to you and that you will provide for them. So in Jesus' name, I just thank you for our time together. Amen. All right. Now it's time to get into our challenge. And oh, is that Gator Gravy? Here's our new friend, Boudreau. Give me some of that. What you gotta know? God is the source of everything I need. Okay. Great job, you guys. Now we have a new challenge to start off today. And our challenge is I would love for you guys to draw or color or write Christmas cards that we can send to the nursing homes this year for Christmas. It's a little last minute, but I would love for you guys to make these cards and get creative and drop them off here at the church. So when you finish them, you can drop them off at the church in person, like on the weekends if you wanted, and you, I can receive them or you can put them in the brown bin outside the parking lot, outside the door in the lower parking lot of the church. And I'll get them there and we can send them to the nursing homes. But you guys can wish them a Merry Christmas or tell them something that you love about this holiday season or maybe your favorite Christmas song. Come up with some fun things to tell them and give them some joy because they're missing a lot of their family this holidays. So I want to encourage you guys, get creative and make some cards and send them here to the church and I will send them out. So that's your challenge for this week. And now the second thing is, guess what? We have been going through this notebook challenge and we're on our fourth week. Okay, I got to make sure I've got the right one. Look at all those. All right, we're on our fourth week. Nice job, you guys. I hope you guys are still following along with me. If you guys want to pick up notebooks, if you guys haven't started and this is your first week and you want to start, I have more notebooks that you guys can get. They're still in the brown bin outside the church if you guys need any. 
But let us dig into our first or fourth week. And it says, I am not afraid. Hebrews 13, 6. Okay, so I am not afraid. Hebrews 13, 6. And I want to challenge you guys. This is a shorter verse, so I wrote it out. I want to challenge you guys to write out this verse for yourself in your notebook and maybe even write a prayer of some of the things that you're worried about or you're afraid because God is bigger than your problems and he will provide for you. So write out a prayer or if you don't like to write yet, draw a picture. Draw a picture of some things that maybe you're worried about that you want God to help take care of. Draw some fun pictures and just spend time with God and journal and do some devotional time down here. All right, so just as a reminder, because we're on our fourth week, if you collect five of these verses with confirmed journal entries, so if your parents send me pictures of your pictures or that you've drawn or the journal entries or prayers, if they send me pictures of that and confirm that, and we have five weeks, which is coming up because we're on our fourth week, so next week would be the fifth week, then you guys could end up getting a prize. So continue to collect them and continue spending time with God, and I will see you guys next week.